So uh, last week, CD Projekt were good enough to send me one of these. It's a review copy of The Witcher 2 Enhanced Edition for the Xbox 360. So uh, here's my review. After nearly a year of waiting and with great anticipation, CD Projekt Red's Witcher 2 has arrived on the Xbox 360 with its beefed up Enhanced Edition, but is it a hero that will save you from the monsters of boredom, or a foul beast that should have stayed in its lair? Witcher 2 follows Geralt of Rivia, a mutant monster slayer who gets framed for the murder of a king and sets out to clear his name. Naturally, this plot soon develops into a web of backstabbing and intrigue, and as you'd expect, it's quite an entertaining yarn, but despite its serious tone, it does have a sense of humour, and manages to throw in a few subtle pop culture references as it goes. However, such is the morality of the world that few of the twists truly surprise, and it soon emerges that it isn't the storyline that's the star of the show, but the supporting cast. Vernon Roach, Dandelion, Yorveth, Letho, and countless others are interesting, well-realised characters with believable motivations and stories, even the characters in the side quests feel real, rather than merely being minor distractions to be mined for XP and gold. Indeed, some of the decisions you make in the side quests can be heartbreaking, and just as in the main plot, there are no good or evil options, but more a sense that you're choosing the resolution that is the least horrible for all concerned. Yet, this isn't a bad thing. It gives your input weight, and piles on layers of authenticity that few games can manage. Perhaps that's one of the best things about The Witcher's world. It isn't a binary world of good or evil, there are no paragon points to win, no reputation bar, just your decisions and their impact, and right up until the bitter end, the game gives you choices that matter. Perhaps the post Mass Effect 3 release was CD Projekt's smartest move of all. As far as the side quests go, there are plenty, but nowhere near as many as in the first Witcher game. Again, this is a smart move, as the first game could become overwhelming with the seemingly endless array of fetch and kill quests. The quests on offer in The Witcher 2, while fewer in number, are generally more involving, and sometimes appear where you'd least expect them, even if they do form a pattern. Each area offers a couple of monster extermination quests, the chance to become the best at the minigames in town, and some human interest quests where you help sort out somebody's problems, for better or for worse. They're decent distractions and fun, but never drag you too far away from the main quests line, giving the game a brisk feeling that is certainly in line with the urgency present in the main story. The minigames mentioned before involve dice poker, fist fighting and arm wrestling, all three are amusing enough, but trivially easy, and you'll find that locating your opponents is more of a challenge than the quests themselves, but it's easy money so you can't complain too much. The presentation is particularly noteworthy. The graphics are superb, and the artists should be commended for their attention to detail in everything from the environment to the smallest pieces of stitching on characters' clothes. However, all is not perfect. While the music does a good job of setting the scene, there are very few lines of environmental NPC dialogue, leading to some annoying moments where you just cannot escape the same sound clip over and over. It's enough to make you want to slaughter everybody in the game. They say witches have no need to plow. They say witches have no need to plow. Did you know that? That one struts about as if he were the king himself. They say witches have no need to plow. Also, the menus can be a tad too fussy. For instance, when choosing to craft an item, if you press A on it, it gives you the option to inspect, while to actually craft, you press Y. It certainly takes a while to get used to. Potions don't show what they are until you inspect them, when it could clearly be added as a line of text when highlighted. While it's nothing major, it can make the menus a little laborious, especially as you'll be spending a lot of time in them. The biggest problem with the game, though, is the prologue. It is easily the worst part of the game, which is a shame because many will likely abandon the game there and then, disillusioned, and never experience the actual game. This is because the combat is unforgiving. It rewards preparation and intelligence, and punishes those who fail to do either. While in the main game you will choose your fights and escape if things go wrong, the prologue throws enemies at you, and if you don't know what you're doing, you will get stuck. The main game also offers a great deal of choices with how you go about doing things, while the prologue sends you down a linear path until you get to Flotsam, the first main town about an hour in. Until that point, it doesn't feel like a Witcher game, and even then, it will be hard going until you've leveled up a bit. It must be said that the difficulty curve is completely backwards. Your first few missions will see you die over and over, while the final few battles in the game are an absolute breeze. It is empowering to see progression, yes, but the first act will see you tearing your hair out. Granted, you will learn some nuances of combat which will benefit you in the long run, but just as many victories will be gained through blind luck as they will through planning. It isn't until you've gained the perks that defang back attacks, enhance your role and enable the repost ability, that you'll start to feel like you can hold your own. But once you have traversed that hump, boy is the combat fun. 
The reason why combat is so difficult at first is because it rewards evasion but punishes blocking. Add to that the fact that if you do block an enemy attack it uses up vigour, the points that are otherwise consumed through magic, and you have to play very cautiously. Once you've got a bit of experience under your belt and looted items, handily villagers don't mind being ransacked so loot away, you can start to make potions and bombs through alchemy and visit crafters who will make you traps, and that's where the fun begins. Before long swarms of enemies will fall to you with little effort, and potions that increase your resistance are a godsend. With the right combination of potions and blade coatings for the job, you can neutralise even the toughest foes, and if you catch them with a few bombs and traps they may even die before you get to lay either of your swords on them. Oh yes, the swords. Geralt has two blades, a steel blade for humans and a silver blade for monsters, assigned to left and right on the d-pad respectively. Mix them up at your peril. Once you've established your favoured playstyle, you can sink talent points into the relevant trees, alchemy, swordsmanship or magic, and you will discover just how great the combat can be. Some will no doubt be disappointed that this game isn't as sprawling as an Elder Scrolls game, and the odd production blip betrays the fact that it's a game made by a relatively small developer on a budget, but this is a quality game bristling with heart. If you can forgive the dire prologue and the ridiculous difficulty at the beginning, especially the second boss, who is without a doubt the hardest part of the game. Witcher 2 is a great experience that offers deep combat, fulfilling quests and most impressively provides a beautiful world that feels like it functions even when you're not there. If Witcher 1 was slightly hamstrung by CD Projekt's ambition, then Witcher 2 is the perfect response, a more tightly focused, morally complex tour de force that addresses nearly every issue of the first game while unfortunately throwing up a few of its own. In that case, roll on Witcher 3. So this being a review you're probably expecting a score, and here it is. That's right, 8 out of 10. This is an absolutely brilliant game and well worth your time and money, despite the rubbish prologue. In fact, I'm on my second playthrough already and I never play a game more than once unless it's Ocarina of Time. So now you've seen this, go out to a shop and buy it. That's all from me, I'm off to now go and plough an elf. Legendary rings of power would be best. One to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. Right, and then I'll have to run barefooted to the top of a volcano.